Hello fellow unicorns and welcome to another video and today we have another YTAC moment otherwise known as YouTube Artist Collective. Also don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell button so that you can get notified in your sub boxes when my videos are out. And today is a very special occasion because today's topic for the YouTube Artist Collective uh, piece is Masquerade Ball. And if you check out YouTube today, you will be able to uh, see artworks done by many different artists from this collective for this same topic. So make sure to check them all out. I will be sure to leave links down below in the description for uh, most of the artists from the collective. Stuff has been changing lately. Some people, uh, due to health problems and family issues, had to uh, leave the collective. But don't worry, a lot of new fresh talent is joining us so it's always fun to just watch all of these amazing people see how they approach the subject in their own unique way and just listen to them uh, about what they had in mind while creating a piece uh, for me personally this will be kind of a story time video so uh, strap onto your seats and I will be telling you guys something more about my very own new original concept that I might be making into a manga if I have time but I really hope you guys enjoyed the little story behind this art piece because it's very dear to me and it has been developing and slowly cooking in my mind slowly and steadily and I am ready to share with you guys something regarding this world I have envisioned I guess and this scene in particular is a very important component of the story so the first thing you see is two masquerading figures in a well some sort of a loving embrace where the male figure slightly kisses the shoulder of the female figure and to be completely um, uh, well transparent what's going on here they are staging a scene for all of the room to see he is doing this deliberately you will notice that she has a chain around her neck uh, you will later notice that she, she has a darker skin tone and a very very light red hair and this is something that's very particular for her uh, sort of elf because my worlds are usually mostly elven I love the elven aesthetics and I really wanted to make a world that can function I wanted to envision a world with creatures who are like humans but can live far longer than humans and my personal uh, imagination of this world is that nothing changes even though these creatures may live longer for thousands and hundreds of years um, their society probably does not evolve quickly does not catch up on quickly they still have slavery they still have medieval views and I wanted to uh, show this civilization in a moment when they realize stuff needs to be changing, um, uh, social castes needs to be uh, different, uh, normal people and slaves need to be free. So this is the main point of this world's history when these types of things come to change. And these two characters are definitely um, s working on it to change something. But is this a right way to change stuff or is it a very wrong way to change stuff? That's something I won't be spoiling, but for starters, let's introduce my main character and that is the red-haired lady called Fiera and her first lover and the first person who ever understood her, um, her very important person, her mentor and her guide uh, and that is Lucian and yeah I know the names are really Latin and generic but I don't care so bear with me anyways um, their job in this scene was to dress up as nobles uh, more more directly as a noble man and his uh, dark-skinned feral uh, slave I guess uh, Fiera was supposed to be acting out as a concubine of a sort just being there but in their society the the forest elves with their darker skin and more um, 
wild nature were considered to be more brutish, to, to not to be uh, smart enough. Like they were literally considered savages among the uh, high social elite. So this was the perfect way to turn the entire room to their uh, to them, I guess, to make a distraction while all of their other friends who are Lucian's army um, just sneak up from behind and make a really big mess of things by literally assassinating a ton of nobles in the room. So Fiera was a part of this. This is a story from Fiera's past. Um, past she really tries well to hide and some details I will not be um, spoiling so fast. This is something more of a prequel scene, but the story I am going to be telling in my drawings and concepts and maybe even animatics or cinematics, I don't know how to even call them. Um, this part of the story will not be the beginning of my story. This part of the story is something she keeps secret, something that she deeply regrets, something from her youth that she doesn't like admitting because she did not know what she was doing, she did not realize the entire grasp of the consequences of her actions and she did not know who to trust at that moment and she did make a lot of bad, mis bad decisions but it's not her fault because the world is a cruel place, it fu it's full of people who want to trick you, it's full of people who want to take advantage of you, take something from you. Um, you just can't win in the realistic world and this is what I'm trying to show in my stories because there isn't there is no such thing as evil and good like completely evil person or completely good person there's there's just people who are naive or gullible or like to take advantage of other people or smart or cunning or in the end, it's all up to people being with and without life experience. And that's what is a kind of a main moral of the story. Just like try to learn from your mistakes, try to be a good person towards others or to the world around you. Try to understand some stuff before acting in rage or something like that. But still, if you make a mistake, try to learn from those mistakes because nobody's perfect. Nobody can completely learn from other people's mistakes. So this is a story about growing up, even though um, it's a story of growing up for hundreds of years of a certain individual or individuals and this medieval looking world with its medieval um, standards and opinions and stuff like that. So I'm trying to put a lot of my personal um, life stories in it as well uh, as a late bloomer and as somebody who is constantly developing themselves and just trying to understand themselves I wanted my characters to be able to do the same thing so this masquerade ball theme has gone into a bigger story I guess and I really really uh, love the opportunity to combine this month's topic to my personal works uh, please let me know if you like this if you like the character character design. I am always posting on my Instagram, Instagram slash Mystic Arts. Uh, you can also uh, follow me for my like vlogging and convention stuff on my Mystic Arts cosplay channel uh, on Instagram or on my cosplay CVG channel on YouTube, but I'm not currently that uh, active on there. So anyways, um, this piece was done with uh, watercolors. I didn't even like try to cheat with Copics on the skin part. I really wanted to have the full feel of the darker and lighter skin tone. When I colored the male face, I realized I needed some more color on the female face and skin just to make sure to have their skin tones really different because Fiera's tribe is a unique one. Um, I wanted to create a world where elves uh, were of different types, of different sizes. Uh, Fiera's tribe is full of very, very tall and strong elves. They are more uh, feral, they are more wild, but they are not savages. They are a very nice community and that loves each other and just they are 
hiding themselves from all of this modern stuff uh, that high-class elite elves are trying to um, put on everybody else. They don't value money that much. They don't value her tribe is just there for the family values, for a calm and peaceful life, for their guardian deity guarding their village. And in, in appearances, they are very different from the city elves because they are taller, bigger, more, more muscular. This is why Fiera's shoulders are so huge. Uh, when she was young, she even had like way less body mass than she does in her current form. In my uh, normal story, she will be big, she will be buff, her hair will be cut off. Um, so a completely different person than the one you see now but it's still a good way to show her transitioning in life to see how much she learned how much she uh, changed as a person from inside and out anyways since her tribe is so different in appearance people from the city elves from the city they usually either kidnap them or um, if they find them somewhere near the city uh, to make them as exotic slaves or something like that so this picture has a more of a really more intense symbolism when you consider this little fact because they have darker skin because they're constantly uh, out uh, on in, in the sun I guess uh, working in fields and just enjoying life having more pigment in their skin is something that created them into bigger more healthier elves and I'm still developing this world I'm still developing the individual characters the races of sorts their um, their different ways of seeing each other um, I, I love the the fact that I can introduce some modern day stuff in my story because the world and societies are not that different there will always be class differences there will always be people with more money who think they can bully people with less money the society works in this way and sometimes i'm just sick and tired of seeing this and i need to channel it into my own art um, recently battling with a lot of depression and a lot of stuff i just decided to pour my heart and soul into this project on the side uh, to create all of my disappointments in people and create something beautiful from this immense sorrow. I recommend everybody to do the same. Try to battle out your demon demons by putting them on paper. Um, this has helped me immensely and I really hope it does help to everybody else too. Uh, I really want to pour out all of my negative energy into this paper and let it transform into something positive. In any case, um, this, even though it does sound a little bit darker, um, I decided that this will not be a complete tragedy of a story like my other concepts are. Uh, I will try to keep it even more like on a light note in some moments. Um, we can't erase the um, negativity of the world, but we can make it a little lighter with some tones of comic relief, some funny characters, some funny interactions and unpredictable situations where our main characters uh, will go. And this is in the end a love story. I never thought I would make a love story, but in the end it turned out that this will be mostly a love story uh, sadly not the love story about these two guys they are just the beginning of the story and stuff will happen um, very nasty stuff will happen so sadly uh, this couple will not be the main couple but it will have its moments and it will really uh, be intense and I just can't wait to share more of it with you guys please let me know if you're interested in a story like this um i will definitely update all of my concepts and create you know, and create characters i can't guarantee having a manga done because manga is something that's really uh hard to make demands a lot of time demands a lot of people working on it and demands a lot of money uh, which is really hard to get if you're a manga artist that's not really like a super top popular manga artist but in any case if I can do something to speed up the story maybe just make some few panels or uh, cinematic or something like that or animatic uh, I will 
be happy to. I'm enjoying currently these characters. I'm enjoying um, drawing them and making them go through situations. Uh, I'm enjoying torturing them and like love problems because I'm just like any other uh, author. I love doing that to my characters. Uh, please follow me on Instagram if you would like to hear more. Also, if you guys have any like suggestions about them, you can definitely leave a comment down in the description and uh, under the description, of course. And you can definitely chat with me on Instagram regarding my stories if you like or dislike something. Um, tomorrow I will be having a brand new giveaway, so make sure to check out my channel tomorrow at the same time. And the next week will be extremely fun because I will be doing a drawing of one of your guys' original characters that I have chosen randomly and there will be another um, testing out and a challenge video of some new equipment I got so uh, we're having like two weeks of double uploads and if you guys have any suggestions of more challenges or something like that or if you guys prefer to have more original characters and stories let me know and I will know how to proceed. I personally love telling people about my concepts and my stories and if they enjoy it too then that's a win-win for me as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoy the rest of the video and the glossy golden details on my characters. See you guys next time! I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you would like to learn how to draw manga, please check out my book Manga Crash Course available in 4 different languages as well as my latest book Manga Crash Course Fantasy.